So today's topic, first topic is Suprema and Infinite. Okay. One of the most important topic, you can expect one two marks question from this. It is mostly applicable for mathematics honors. It is taken from mathematics honors, but in actuarial science also it will be very much useful. But how we are going to do it? First, they will give you a sequence. They will give you a general sequence. A general sequence is like xn equal to 1, 2, dot, 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 n. Now can anyone tell me, is it an increasing sequence or decreasing sequence? Increasing. It's a simple increasing sequence because the second term is greater than the first term. But if I give you only this term, is it an increasing sequence? Answer is again it's an increasing sequence. If you keep on putting 3, 4, 5, 6, like x5 here is greater than x4, that is greater than x3 in this pattern, and that is greater than x6. So this is also an increasing pattern. Okay. So but if xn equal to 1 by x square plus 2x, is this an increasing pattern? Here also the values are increasing, but as these values in the denominator, so ultimately this is Falling. So this is a decreasing sequence. In examinations with this format, MCQ or multiple choice type, MCT, what is the difference? Multiple choice type means one question which four year five and five six options are there and maybe more than one can be correct. And this MCQ section, you know how it is being done. So here increasing or decreasing you can just put a value and cross check which is not possible in maths honors related or any higher level or where you have to explain it. Maybe in the higher levels of actuarial science when the question comes you have to explain this kind of entire structure. So whenever we say that one is in the numerator and rest of the thing are in the denominator it is directly a decreasing function. And if it is everything in the numerator like this but what happens if it is like this x square plus 2x by x cube plus 9x to the power 6. Is it an increasing and decreasing? Because both have x and in the numerator and denominator. So what is this? It's a decreasing. It's a decreasing because the highest power 2 plus 1, 3. And here the highest power 6 plus 3, 9. Okay, so the highest power of the numerator is greater than the highest power of the less than the highest power of denominator. So it is actually a decreasing function. So this is also a way of saying functions. Clear? Very simple logic of checking an increasing function or a decreasing function. Now, what is the use of this? This entire chapter is dependent on a concept that whether this kind of suprema and infima will be applicable with respect to the <coughs> applicability of boundedness or not. Okay. So first we have to check whether it is bounded or not. First bounded. This is also a question. And then it is suprema or infima. There are a lot of complicated theory on this, but I will give you a very shortcut way of finding Suprema and Infinite. Okay, so let's start with the easy question today. I have, I am going to give you one sequence, and the sequence is Sn equal to 1 by n. Sn equal to 1 by n, where n this. N, this means the sign called belongs to, and capital N means natural, natural numbers. Where small n becomes to natural numbers, so this is the structure. Okay, so suprema and infima, these are the two very important. First, we have to check what is happening if the values increase up to infinity. Okay, if the value increase up to infinity. So, what is the first value? 1 by 1. What is the second value? 1 by 2, which 1 by 3, and Sn. Or maybe s tends to be no natural number goes to infinity, so 1 by infinity, so the last value will be 0. So the ultimate span starts from 1 by 1, that is 1, and goes till 0. So this thing is a bounded part. So the first part comes to your mind is the thing is bounded. Next thing which you are going to write is whether it is infimum or suprema. If it is infimum or suprema, then <coughs> here suprema will be what? Suprema of the sequence is 1 and infimum of the sequence is 0. Infimum means when you go to the extended part go to till infinity that will give you the 0. In generally you don't have to ponder on the base of the theory or very high theory. You just keep on doing it whatever the highest value you put it as supremum whatever the lower value that you put it as infimum. Especially for insecurity. So I am not saying it for any 
high level examination for those examination with the MCQ like IIT jam also you can do it okay some of you are giving so this is the pattern okay first sum done this is the way each and every time you follow my formula you will get a correct answer okay next again I am giving you one question 4n plus 3 by n SN equal to 4n plus 3 whole divided by a 4n plus 3 whole divided by a checking the supreme and infima where n is a natural number same style we will be following over here always remember suprema will be greater than infima until unless everything is same so here what are you going to do so sn equal you split it it is 4 plus 3 by n it is 4 plus 3 by n the first part so it is 4 plus 3 by n what is s1 says it is 4 plus 3 by 1 that is 7 what is s2 something less than this 3 by 2 4 into so it is 5.5 s3 again 3 by 3 it is only 5 then s4 it is falling actually so when you go to s infinity what is happening 4 plus 3 by infinity so that is 4 so it lies between 4 to 7 so what is the infima over here 4 is the infima and this is the supremum that's it and here the bound is 4 to 7 okay most of the cases you haven't learned the things like this but this is the better way of doing any kind of question of supremum and infinima no matter how tough it is put 1, 2, 3 and infinity check whether it is increasing or decreasing and then go for the catch next part because this is very crucial because in the last formula I said the powers differences should be there but here both the power is 1 so you have to divide by any one of the power and check okay so again I am going for the third question of this chapter n by n plus 1 I will be doing around 15 to 16 problems some I will solve some I will give you as homework sn equal to sn equal to n by n plus 1 sn equal to n by n plus 1 if it is happening like this then what gonna happen sn equal to n by n plus 1 is your thing so now you have going to proceed with the structure which I have done before so how to do it because here if you keep on directly putting in not all the cases you just directly put the value but this is one of the cases where you can still directly put the value so let me check with S1 half, half. what is S2? 2 by 3 so half is what? 0 0.5 this is 0 0.75 what is S3? 3 by no this is 0 0.67 3 by 4 0.75 so in that way the value is increasing so simply we can answer that it is a what kind of a pattern here yeah. so last of all what is happening is infinity so you can cross check the infinity pattern over here in this kind of cases what is the solution process it is n by n plus 1 you can't directly put infinity divide the numerator and denominator by n so this is n by n n by n plus 1 by n so 1 plus 1 by n so 1 plus 1 by infinity that is this sorry this part is 0 so it is 1 so the thing lies between 0 0.5 to 1 this is a very different kind of a question so the entire thing lies between 0 0.5 to 1 the entire thing lies between 0 0.5 to 1 this equal to will not be there as at infinity it is coming so you can't be putting a equal to so this is the positive bound if they ask you about the bound you will write it like this now what is 0 0.5 obviously this should be the So suprema is 1 and infima is half. Again I said you don't have to go to the theory much. All you need to know whatever the two extreme values come. 1 which is less that will be your infima and 1 which is higher that will be your suprema. Next question I am proceeding. This will be a relatively different from the other. It's a different breed of question I am going to give you. Okay. And they have given you a sequence. This time, 
a numerical sequence is provided minus 2 minus 3 by 2 minus 2 minus 3 by 2 minus 4 by 3 minus 5 by 4 and last one is minus n plus 1 by n. So now with respect to this pattern we need to guess whether there is a suprema enthema exist or not. How to do it? You see these two patterns are very much similar to each other. The last problem we do and this problem very similar. So now this sum is a minus 2. This sum is a minus 2 over here. So minus 2 you keep minus 2. You don't do anything with that. Your job is with this one. So let's see minus n plus 1 can do what it can do for us. So if there's a minus and again whenever numerator and denominator have the same power you divide with n just like the limit classes we have done. So 1 plus 1 by n by 1. So this will be again simply minus 1. Clear? Any doubt in this? So, bracket that. Those are in the brackets. So if you open the bracket that will be n minus 1. No, the everything is in my bracket. So this is in a number like each and every time they are putting a bracket beside a number. It's not like that. Okay. So my n plus 1 by n minus 1 plus 1 by n by 1. So minus 1, this is 1 by infinity that is 0 and that is 1. So ultimately it is minus 1 and this part is minus 2. So which one is higher, minus 2 or minus 1? Minus 1 is higher. So minus 2 x minus 1, this is your pattern. So now you know what is suprema, what is infima. Isn't it easy? Okay. So this is the process of doing a suprema infima which is being done at a very tough way in most of the books, study materials and everything. So but this is the way. Don't worry, I will be doing some more problems on this because some of the year they will give you a bigger sequence with a 5 marks question in MCQ as well. So now one question on the basis of infinite GP series. Okay. So infinite GP and mixture of suprema and infima. Uh, where, what happens when infinite GP is mixed up with suprema infinity? Let me check. The sequence is 1, 1 plus half, 1 plus half plus half square. <coughs> <coughs> this one each and every is an individualistic term you need to deal with see we don't have any bothering about this because it is very much prominent that it's an increasing series why first one is one second one is more than that third one is again more than that it's an increasing fact but what is happening at the end that gives you by the last term take the last term only here, last term is the key. Last term, please focus over here. This portion, last term is the key for a series. Last term is the key for a series, and how are we going to do it? One plus half plus half square. Dot dot dot. One by two to the power n. So. Here, uh, it's an infinite uh, series structure and we know that there are two formulas of GP. One is a finite GP. That is A r to the power n minus 1 divided by r minus 1. And infinite GP, A 1 minus r. These are the two formulas of summation of GP series. Okay. These are the two basic formulas of summation of GP series. Here we will be applying the basic structure. Okay. And it will be 1 into 1 minus 2 to the power n divided by 1 minus half. Clear? You know what you can do next. If you can simplify the entire structure, it will give you at the end that is 2 into 1 minus 2 to the power n minus 1. This is the way you will get it at the end. 2 minus 1 divided by 2 to the power n minus 1. Rather, uh, this 2 will be inside and this is a half. So, this is you don't need to put it. 
So 2 minus 1 by 2 to the power n minus 1 is the structure. Now what happens if you put infinity? n tends to infinity. If you put n tends to infinity, if n tends to infinity, that is 2 minus 1 by 2 to the power infinity. So that part is gone. So it is 2. So this entire value ends up to be a 2 when n tends to infinity. And the lowest value is 1. So the entire structure lies between 1 less than or equal to Sn less than or equal to 2. So now you know the supreme value. Okay. Again the last part and the first part is always same. In the middle part you make some changes. Okay. When it comes to human being, the rest of the body is always the same. Only the face changes. Okay. So here only the face and the lower part is same and the, the middle part is changing how to deal with that. Because once you reach to this position, most of the cases students and most of the cases in some cases I have seen teachers also have some most kind of problem that what would be the supreme value and they will give you a long theory. And my theory is very easy, just whatever is highest that's your supreme and whatever is lowest that's your infinite. Okay. So you can cross check with the other material problem which has been provided to you. That is I have provided in my mat around 20 problems on this and in the institute mat you will find around 5 to 6 problems which has been solved already. Okay. This is all about the suprema and increma structure. Now some, I'm going for the next uh, part. Which is, what is the next part I said today I will do? Okay. So next topic today is permutation and combination. Before that anything I said? Application of summation. Hmm? Application of summation. Give me one. Okay, application. So the next topic, the next topic will be application of summation and integration. I'm going to get a